The Stony Brook football program under head coach Chuck Priori has captured conference championships as well as national spotlight in the FCS landscape. The 2017 squad shared similar success, pushing itself toward the top of the Colonial Athletic Association, one of the toughest conferences in the country. Their 10-3 finish earned them second place in the CAA and ranked them 11th in the final national polls. The results are proof of the hard work, unity, and determination of Stony Brook football under Coach Priori. The war goes to the day! 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 I'm a big old son! I'm not my job! I do my job! I will not quit! I have no fear! I have no fear! I have no mercy! I have no mercy! Never one to back down from a challenge, the Seawolves faced their first ever ranked FBS opponent in number 19 South Florida. The Seawolves went to Tampa with the focus on winning and put together a massive team effort to challenge the Bulls. It would be the special teams to draw first blood when sophomore wideout Andrew Trent blocked a punt and redshirt freshman Augie Contressa jumped on the ball in the end zone, giving Stony Brook a 7-0 lead. Stony Brook would pull even with the 19th ranked Bulls in the fourth quarter, 17-17, after a 54-yard touchdown run by Stacy Bedell. Stony Brook fought a tough defensive battle containing star quarterback Quentin Flowers for nearly the entire game and limiting the Bulls' offense until a few opportune strikes allowed the Bulls to pull away. Stony Brook would build on their start to put together an early four-game win streak, including three wins over CAA opponents Rhode Island, Towson, and William & Mary. A major key for the offense was the development of redshirt junior quarterback Joe Carbone. The Weathersfield, Connecticut product took off in a career year, throwing 23 touchdown passes and 2,470 pass yards, the second most in a single season in program history. Carbone built a strong connection with his receivers. Senior Ray Bolden of Euless, Texas, graduate Harrison Jackson of Round Hill, Virginia, and junior Donovan Washington of Glendora, California. Bolden, an all-CAA first-teamer, would wrap up his career with 171 career receptions, ranking second all-time at Stony Brook, and top six in yards, touchdowns, and 100-yard games. Play action. And tipped around and still caught by Ray Bolden. Bolden was such a reliable weapon that he set new career highs in receiving yards three different times in 2017. Harrison Jackson bounced back after missing last year due to injury. Bolden now in the slot. This time they go up top, complete touchdown. Hauling in seven touchdowns, including two game winners and over 600 receiving yards. He's going to fire up the same catch made. He may be gone. 40, Jackson 30, 20, 15, 10, 5. See you later. 76 yards. They fired that deep. Washington was a key target in the passing game. He hauled in 40 receptions, second most on the squad, and four touchdowns. Boom, back to pass, rolling to his right, looking, still looking, going to throw it back near side, wide open, touchdown! Donovan Washington! He... The tight ends group was led by senior captain Dennis Lestrange of Smithtown, New York, a tireless leader on and off the field. And first team all CAA selection, Cal Daniels, of Bethel, Connecticut, who would add over 250 receiving yards. Complementing the aerial attack was the patented three-headed monster that is the running backs group, all Long Island products. Seniors Stacy Bedell of Mastic Beach and juniors Donald Leotine of Medford and Jordan Gowans of Bellport produced one of the best ground games in the nation, keeping up tradition that is strong running from the Seawolves.
Bedell, an All-CAA first team selection, finished third in the CAA in rush yards and wrapped up a stellar career, ranking top three all-time in carries, yards, touchdowns, and 100-yard games. Big play, quick snap up the middle. That is Bedell hit, bounces off, and he will get into the end zone for the score. Well, that's what a guy like Stacy Bedell can do for you, particularly when they. Ball shotgun snap, give to Donnie. Up the middle again, runs over a man into the end zone, touchdown. Leotine's 10 rushing touchdowns finished second in the CAA and ranked third in all-purpose yards per game. Wilds. Trying Leotine again, and he Ooh. will carry Rubin into the end zone. Touchdown, Stony Brook. Now it's again with room at the five, at the four, the two. He stumbles ahead in for the touchdown. Gowans contributed over 400 yards and six touchdowns, part of a group that would earn pay dirt 23 times. Receiver to each side, give to Gowans, between the tackles, Jordan up the middle for a touchdown! Boy, it just parted right there, didn't it? Plowing the way for the Seawolves was the offensive line group, a cohesive unit that led the way to 29.2 points per game. The unit was led by senior left tackle Timon Paris, the Long Island native who would earn first team all CAA honors and finished a stellar career, starting in all 41 career games. He was flanked by senior Armani Garrick of Brooklyn, New York, and Elizabethtown, Pennsylvania native senior Jackson Miller, 24 career starts. One constant year to year is the top flight execution of coordinator Tony Thompson's special teams. The unit blocked two punts for touchdowns this season, and juniors Nick Courtney and Alex Lukanski combined to successfully kick 12 field goals, the most since 2013. Medford, New York native Isaiah White was a special teams force, earning all CAA second team honors as a specialist. The kick return group, led by junior Donald Leotine, paced the CAA with 22.6 yards per return as a group and featured senior Darren Peart's 71-yard return versus Wagner. He's going to have some room at the 20, cuts inside 25-30, 35-40, look out, 45-50, far sideline at the 40, the 30, the 25, the 20, and pushed out of bounds at the 15. As far as reputation goes, Stony Brook has long been associated with tough, well-rounded defense, always near the top of the statistical rankings. The front eight of the Seawolves dictated games, stifling opposing offenses on their way to seven CAA wins, the most conference wins in school history. Yard line for Richmond. Collins this time is eaten up in the backfield by Usman Kamara. Senior All-CAA second teamer Usman Kamara of Bayshore, New York, junior John Haggard of Sayville, New York, and sophomore Jordan Scarborough of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, anchored the front line, terrorizing opposing backfields. Give it on the sweep to Young. The ball down on the ground, picked up by Jordan Scarborough. The big man heading down the sideline and pushed down from behind. Second team all-conference junior Shane Lawless of Moorestown, New Jersey, and junior Noah McGinty of Carlsbad, California, excelled at the second line of defense, combining for 189 tackles, 23 tackles for loss, 10 sacks, four forced fumbles, and two interceptions.
Wallace ranked third in the CAA in sacks and tackles for loss, while McGinty ranked second on the team with 96 tackles. The defensive backfield rounded out a stellar unit led by seniors Tyrese Beverett, Darren Peart, Trayvon Reed Sr., and Chris Cooper. There's Carpenter, the handoff goes on the left side, and that is nothing doing. Slammed to the turf. Nice. They would put the final clamp on opposing teams, roaming the secondary and creating havoc. Cooper of Mount Vernon, New York, earned second team all-conference, while Beverett of Lakewood, New Jersey, Peart, and Reed Segura, both of Brooklyn, New York, each earned third team all-CAA honors. Reed Segura recorded a team-high four interceptions. Peart would add three more, while Beverett would lead the team with 96 tackles, and Cooper piled on another 88 tackles and an interception. Here's the snap and the give going off left side, has room, there's Bedell, 45-40, he's going to take it all the way for an early touchdown. Holy smoke, the left side of the line just opened like the Red Sea, and he took it the distance. He went 62 yards off left tackle. With both sides of the ball firing on all cylinders, the Seawolves would bounce back from a tight week six battle with Delaware and put together complete efforts to build a five-game win streak to end the year. In front of the largest crowd in the newly renovated Kenneth P. Laval Stadium, Stony Brook would take down number 12 New Hampshire at homecoming, shutting the Wildcats out in the second half and posting 38 points behind Stacey Bedell's 157 rushing yards. The Seawolves then traveled to number 17 Richmond and took down another ranked conference opponent. The Spiders ended the year atop the CAA ranks with 452 yards per game. Montlena will give to Collins. The Seawolves would completely dominate Richmond, limiting them to just 271 yards, only 161 of them through the air. Ray Bolden collected a career-best 13 receptions and had 118 receiving yards to go with his two scores and pushing Stony Brook into the top 25. Carbone, it's complete Bolden touchdown. Week 10 brought the battle for the Golden Apple to Long Island in a tough rivalry game against the Albany Great Dane. Second and goal from the four. Two receivers near his side. Give again to Bedell. Bounces to the outside. He'll score easily into the far corner of the end zone. An exciting clash would result in overtime when quarterback Joe Carbone would step up in the clutch, finding Harrison Jackson on first down for 13 yards and then dropping in a perfect ball for the go-ahead score on the very next play. A lob one far corner, Jackson touchdown! He absolutely abused that corner and made the score for six. That's a big one, I think. Albany would take over looking for a touchdown, but the stout Seawolves defense controlled the possession and forced an incomplete pass on fourth down to capture the Golden Apple Trophy. When the trophy is at stake, the Seawolves are a perfect 2-0 at home. The regular season would come to a close when the Seawolves traveled to Maine in what would become an instant classic. Stony Brook entered the fourth quarter trailing 19-7 when Carbone and the offense took over, piling on 181 of his 222 passing yards for the game. High back to throw, going to lob one up, near corner of the end zone, Davey making the catch is Donovan Washington. Carbone would find Donovan Washington in the end zone to bring the Seawolves to a four-point deficit. Maine's offense was stymied by the Seawolves, held to just 22 yards in the final quarter. Stony Brook would take over from their own 27-yard line with just 31 seconds remaining. Carbone and Washington would connect for a big 23 yards to put the Seawolves in striking distance all the way to the main 35-yard line. Black Bears, Joe, looking to throw. Going to step up. 
go deep corner, deep near corner of the end zone. Three men down there. They go up. Did he get it? Did he get it? No, yes, yes, a touchdown. Oh my God. On the near corner of the end zone. But it's enough for a touchdown. A Hail Mary on the last play. Seahawks win it. They win it. Jackson would come up the hero again, out jumping three defenders to haul in the game-winning score and Stony Brook's ninth regular season win, equaling the school record. The win would secure a second-place conference finish and solidify a spot in the FCS playoffs for the first time since 2012. The 2017 FCS playoffs returned to Kenneth P. Laval Stadium as the 10th-ranked Stony Brook Seawolves hosted Patriot League champion Lehigh. The matchup featured one of the top offensive teams in the nation in the Mountain Hawks against one of the best defenses, and it would be the host team on both sides of the ball showing up big. Quickly up to the line, another snap. They again, they go to Donnie up the middle for a touchdown. They hurried that up, just went right back to their bread and butter, and he took it in from two. Stony Brook would run through, over, and around Lehigh, putting up its highest offensive output of the year. Playoffs. Quick snap. Give again. Bedell up the middle. He dies for the touchdown. Again, they hurried it up. This time it was Stacy they gave it to. He went off left guard. It's 16 to 7. A whopping 622 yards of total offense behind 354 rushing yards. With the fake handoff, looking, going to fire deep over the middle. Daniels wide open, 15, 10, rumbling into the end zone for a touchdown. Walker made the tack on the last play. Go back to Donnie, off guard with room at the five, touchdown. He just snaked through there, almost went in on top. Right, here's the give to Alston coming around near side with row 40, 25, he should take it, 20, 15, 10, 5, Sherman, Alston, Jr. Six different Seawolves scored touchdowns in the 59-29 first round victory and would be Coach Priori's third home playoff win in three tries. A victory sent Stony Brook on the road in the second round where they would face the defending national champions, number one ranked James Madison. Carbone fakes the handoff, looks long to Jackson, touchdown! Harrison Jackson recorded his third consecutive 100-yard performance, and Carbone's touchdown pass was his 23rd on the year, the second most in a single season at Stony Brook. Coach Priori would send out a team that competed all four quarters, holding the Dukes to 304 yards of total offense, more than 100 yards below their season average. The Seawolves would overpower the Dukes' running game, holding them to just 49 yards, well off their season average at the time of 211 yards per game, which was top 20 in FCS. The defense stood especially tall on third down, holding JMU to a 25% conversion rate and for seven punts on the day. Despite honoring 19 seniors in 2017, Stony Brook will see a wealth of talent and experience return on both sides of the ball. hungry to build upon the playoff success of the 2017 season. The Seawolves will once again push for a CAA title on the backs of student athletes hungry for success after a playoff run. Scoring came in bunches as the 29 points per game ranked second in the conference with 10 different players scoring, two on special teams and a total of 85 plays going for 20 or more yards. The defense finished in the top 25 in total defense in 2017 with 10 players recording a sack, 12 tallying a forced fumble on the year, and five different Seawolves with interceptions. The special teams unit returns all of its key members, including a group that finished fifth in the FCS in kick return coverage. Stony Brook University set a new attendance record at homecoming with 12,311 screaming fans at Laval Stadium. They would capture 16 total postseason awards, including 11 All-CAA selections. Timon Paris earned four All-American honors from AP, Stats FCS, AFCA, and Phil Steele, and Cal Daniels picked up a first-team Stats FCS All-American honors. The Seawolves would show up twice on the national stage, taking down two ranked opponents and took FBS-ranked South Florida to the final minutes of the game. Each week presented a challenge to the Stony Brook football team, 
a team that grew together as a family in 2017 and will continue to work to reach their goal of a title run in 2018. Don't doubt us. Let's go.